Hi, uh, my name is Sharon Wells and uh, I'm a felt maker for 16 years and what I make, I specialise in doing felted pictures. And uh, today we're going to go through the whole process of how I create um, wool to use for my pictures. Uh, recently I have been acquiring Irish wool and I have um, been um, processing it from start to finish. So uh, we will be starting off and I'll show you how to go through uh, turning the raw wool into something that you can use for pictures. Now I'm using all my own wool at the moment as well because there's loads of texture in it and it's um, in this kind of a form. So this is um, the kind of type of thing I'm going to be showing you today. So I will create um, sheets of felt for use in some of my smaller pieces. Um, and then in something like this, that would be the wool that's created on my felting machine. And then I will dye it, hand dye it, um, in different colours. And then I will use different backgrounds to suit different pictures. So here's one I'm working on at the moment. And as you can see, I hand dyed the backgrounds here. Um, with I have a special method of dyeing so that I get uh, a lot of variation in colour and then I'll add all these textural bits to it um, in the right place. So we, I pick each bit after I've dyed it to suit the picture that um, I think will work best on it. So I will do things like um, dandelions or um, bog cotton. Uh, there's a few of my favourites and um, that would be that kind of thing and then this would be the pictures that I will create with wet felting. So um, all of this will be laid out bit by bit and then wet felted and then needle felted and then um, hand stitched and uh, machine stitched on top of that. So um, so that's the result um, so we're going to go through the process. Okay so now we're going to have a look at um, this raw fleece which was gifted to me from some farmers in Akko. So I'm just going to bring this out here and let you have a good look at it. This is in its raw state. For those of you who don't like uh, touching things directly you should probably use gloves. At this stage I don't really mind. So um, here we have obviously the dirty bits. We call them the dags. They're the bits around the uh, back end of the sheep. Um, we don't want to use these. It's going to be really difficult to get that clean. So um, what I do, this is called skirting actually. This process is taking the good wool and uh, discarding the stuff that we don't really want to use for felting or for clothing. Now for felting, this kind of wool is, um, is ideal to use in, with its locks in, intact because you get a lot of texture, you can use it for the sea, you can use it for, um, you know, for clouds and for different things like that. So what we want to do is we want to keep that intact there when we take it out, so we'll wash it gently. Also, I make um, peglin rugs with this wool and it's very handy then if you actually pull it off in long pieces and strips so that when I'm weaving I can just spin it around a little bit like this and I have big long pieces that I can put into onto the loom. So this is the good stuff here and we have to wash it because there's lanolin in it to um, protect the wool and lanolin will resist dyes so we have to remove the lanolin. Now for felting we can use any type of wool um, you know, as long as it's in good condition, we don't want it dirty, obviously. Um, but years ago when they were skirting wool, they would only take the best bits so that it, because it will be for clothing, you know, for um, spinning uh, into blankets and shawls and uh, knitting into jumpers and things like this. Uh, now we're going to wash some wool. Um, this particular fleece I've chosen here is a Valet Black Nose um, fleece which I got from County Dublin. Um, the reason why I want to wash this today is I want to give you an idea of different types of fleeces anyway that I use. This is different from the previous one. Um, this has beautiful uh, fibres in it and they come, out, um, they, they come out really shiny. So it's a really nice fleece to use. So in order to wash it, 
we need to remove the lanolin, but we need to give this a bit of a rinse first of all. So I'm just going to put it in my bucket and add a bit of cold water. Now because this is wool, you always have to be really careful about not agitating it too much because you don't want this to felt before you get a chance to actually use it. So, and you never really know how dirty your face is until you put it in the water and start rinsing it. Sometimes it looks quite clean, but it isn't. But you can see even then I was taking a lot of the dirt out of it just with the first rinse. So I'm using this barbecue rack just because I have it handy and it hasn't been used in the house, but I use it kind of like to weight the wool down. So when I'm rinsing this water out, this, that my wool doesn't go down the sink and block it. So that's one rinse in cold water. And you'll see that's a lot cleaner now already. And starting to get and um, the fibers are opening up and it makes it easier to get at the vegetation when the fibers open up as well you can kind of pick that out manually so we're doing a second rinse now just add the cold water and the water is a lot cleaner than it was the first time Kind of see that. So we'll put this in again. Now it's up to you how much fleece you wash at a certain time. You can just pick up a system yourself. Um, this is the amount I do each time, is just because it's handy for me to because I have that that amount of space and also I can um, hang this up to dry easily as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give it the hot wash and the hot wash doesn't have to be boiling hot wash but it, it has to be um, sort of tap water. So I'm combining a bit of cold tap water with a kettle that I boiled. I'm also using this um, power scar which I've started using recently. It's um, for removing lanolin and getting your fleece extra clean. So I'm just going to, I mean it's not exact but I'm just pouring a little bit on like that. I'm just going to, I've added, I'm going to add a small bit of water. Now I'm adding, hold on, show you. I added the hot water and the cold water together because again we want to make sure that our fleece is not going to felt. And because it was in cold water before, adding hot water straight on top of it now would actually cause it to felt. So you just need to be really careful at this point. So, um, this scour needs to sit in the wool for 15 minutes and then you um, rinse it out because it's removing the lanolin so you don't want the water to get cold um, because the lanolin will go back into the fleece. So we're just going to leave that sit and I'll come back to it in 15 minutes and I'll rinse that out. Okay, so after I finished washing the fleece, um, it rinses, you give it a bit of a, a squeeze to get most of the water out of it and I put it then into these laundry bags um, which allow the air to come in and out. So you know on a sunny day you can hang it outside but at the moment um, what I like to do here is I hang it on my pegs up here and just let that drip dry. I can put a bucket under it if it's very wet and um, you see here now I have a few different ones. Um, I think that's there's a few Romney ones in Suffolk I have been um, I've washed in the last week or so and this is um, some Suffolk that's been dyed so we're going to be doing that next showing you how to dye it right uh, now we're going to go and uh, dye a bit of wool and this is a really exciting process for me um, I will do this whenever I feel like doing it just for a bit of fun um, the, the colours are fantastic so what I have here is um, some of the wool you saw that went through the whole process. So we've washed it, we've removed the lanolin, um, and here it is. And it's quite, it still resembles the way it is in its raw state. You know, I haven't taken, I haven't carded it, I haven't prepared it in any way for spinning. 
you know, as I said, because we want to keep the texture in it. So we're just going to throw some into this pot here. And here we go. I mean, you can dry a lot of it in one go if you feel like it. Um, it really depends on the saturation you want of colour. So I like a lot of saturation of colour and I also like um, a mix of colours. So I have a certain way of uh, dyeing things. So what we're going to add to this is hot water. Now, the hot water is just going to save a bit of time when you put it on the hob. Um, I like to reduce the amount of electricity I use. So I also have a solar oven, which I use to keep things um, hot at times when we have sunny weather. So um, what I'm going to do now is put in um, a bit of colour. So this is an acid dye. The reason why it's an acid dye is because it is fixed with vinegar. It's not an acid in itself. Um, you just need to be careful when using them. You don't want to inhale them. Um, obviously they're in powder form. So what I would do here is just give it a bit of a tip like this, in like this, so if you can see that. Now, I don't tend to cover all of my wool in one colour. As I said, I, have, I like the variation of colour. So I will just let the dye hit what it's going to hit and let some of it um, pale. So later on, when the dye starts absorbing, its um, uh, saturation colour will reduce. So you can get loads of different shades. But, so this is your um, this is your fixer, a bit of vinegar. Again, I'm not measuring. I'm putting a generous amount in because if you don't put the vinegar in, the dye will not absorb into the wool at all. So with this then, I'll take this and I'll put it on a heat source. So I have, um, you know, an electric uh, oven outside of my shed. So I'll leave it there for 20 minutes simmering. You don't need to boil it because you need to be careful again about the it felting. And you just let the uh, dye absorb into the wall. And when it's clear, you'll know it's absorbed. If it's not clear, add a little bit more vinegar and leave it for a little bit longer. Um, but that's the process. Um, hi, so we have just um, taken this off the simmer and um, the colours are lovely. We have a lovely couple of greens in here. So what I want to do with this now is just strain the most of the water out of it. So I have a sieve here and I'm just going to pour this in there like that. I'm just going to lift this up and I'm going to just push that through the sieve just to get the excess water out of it. There we are, like that. So I need to hang this up to dry, so I'm going to use one of these bags that I was using earlier, these laundry bags, um, because the, the airflow through them is really good. So I'm going to put this in here, drop some, and right, so I'm just going to hang it up here and let it drip dry. So if it was a sunny day, you could put it outside in the line. You can give it a bit of a squeeze there as well, just to get a bit more water out. And here I'm going to show you um, the one of the final processes of um, the wool fibre. So um, we dyed the wool fibre. This is um, what it's like before it's dyed in its washed state. This is it after we've dyed it. This is drying out here now today. And this is what happens when it dries out. So this one is a nice example of a blue-faced Leicester wool. We have some lovely uh, variation of color in this and beautiful curly locks. And as I was saying earlier, for felters, this is ideal because you still have so much texture in here and can you imagine adding all this into your pictures. Now I would use this for, um, uh, for the sea and for the sky and um, it's fantastic for adding in like distant waves and that kind of stuff. So that's one of my favourites, the Fleet Face Lester. And another one of my favourites is this one here. This is the ballet, which I always drop. 
the valet is a beautiful um, silky wool. We washed some of that earlier and this is what it comes out like when you dye it. Beautiful. Now some of this can be used um, as felting fibre and I also use it for making these pegloom rugs. So as I said earlier when you're um, uh, when you're washing the wool you can pull it out in, in strips and you can spin it loosely so that you can weave it round the pegs on the peg loom so you can make these rugs. Um, you can take this fibre and you can card it for spinning so you can make it nice and fluffy. Um, this is a bit there, that's, that's carded. So we were looking at this earlier, this is uh, nice and fluffy so that's kind of suitable then for going into spinning. And when you spin it, if you're a good spinner, like my friend Jane, you can spin it into any type of yarn, but this is a particular art yarn, which um, I'm going to use in my pictures, but I'm also going to make some shawls out of this as well. And um, this would all be from Irish wool. So, and I suppose we go back to the pictures here where, uh, where we use some of um, the fibres. So this stuff is, um, this will be the natural undyed wool. This will be a uh, Scotch black base wool. And we have examples then of a bit of, um, these are those locks we were just looking at a few minutes ago, Blue Face Leicester. And then we have this, which, which is, I think it's a Hereford. Um, I'm not totally sure because this one was gifted to me. And as you can see, it's, it's really good for texture. It reminds me of, uh, the Boglands of Kerry, which is what well, I love the colours of the Boglands of Kerry and the textures and things like that. So, you know, you don't have to do an awful lot to, to it. Just You just tack it down with your felting needle and you have a lot of texture. So, that's it. And here are a few examples of some of the pictures that I've done over the years. Um, this one, um, I'm just going to lay them out for you. This one is Bean Hill, it's the view from my parents' house in Kerry. Um, this one here is a bunch of flowers that were um, put together by a lady in the area called Sally. And this is the red boat in Valencia Island. So these would all contain uh, different types of felting fibre and silks and um, there will be uh, some examples here. So we have um, Carded Romney, we have uh, Suffolk, we have Jacob's Wool, we have Blue Face Leicester, Valet, Ackle, Scotch, um, Scotch Black Face from Kerry, and all of these are sourced from Irish farms. Um, so this is the, the at the fibre stage. Um, after this is carded, it will turn into roving. And this is uh, Romney roving which I sourced from a farm in South Wicklow. And this is a, a Cheviot here as well. And I've dyed these, I sourced them white and, and dyed them. So these can be used for spinning or you can use them for felting as well. Um, they won't have the bumps and lumps and texture in them, but they, they're, there are loads of colors in them because they're dyed with that um, a three-stage process. And the, this then is, um, this one is a Cheviot. These are Cheviot here. And this is a bit of, um, there's a few here that I just keep for art's sake, because I like looking at them. So uh, this is a, a, a valet, uh, blue nose with the beautiful, beautiful curls on it. And my favourite of all is this Kerry fleece, which I just washed and actually felted in place in the sink at the same time. And I then dyed with a few different colours and uh, I wear it when I need to feel cosy, warm and close to carry the felting and the land and everything that I love. So this is me, Sharon Wells.